Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Come out of the pack of nine. Luke 17 from verse 15 to 17 says, When one of them saw that he was healed, he turned back and praised God in a loud voice. He quickly bowed at Jesus' feet and thanked him. The man was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Weren't ten men made clean? Where are the other nine? Only this foreigner came back to praise God. This is the fourth in our series on giving thanks, especially in this week of Thanksgiving. Gratitude is a pretty powerful expression. It communicates impact and connection. You did something for me that has impacted me physically, emotionally, financially, or morally, and I want you to know that I appreciate it. In expressing gratitude, one recognizes that it is not mandatory. Maybe it is expected but it is certainly of your own volition. Sometimes you will be prodded or poked to say thanks, like some parents do with their children. But gratitude, when done sincerely and from the heart, is a meaningful expression that brings joy to both persons. Let us go to our text to guide us. The text is more than a narrative. It is instructive. On this particular day, Jesus was on a journey from his home base in Galilee to Jerusalem. This time, he did what most Jews do. They would not walk through the province of Samaria because Jews and Samaritans do not get along. He walked on the border. But in this story, Jews and Samaritans did get together. Ten men with a terrible skin disease were bound together in their sufferings, Jews and Gentiles. But Jesus was about to encounter this pack of ten. They called out to him for help. Clearly they knew of him and wasted no time, nor were they polite. They made a loud noise. If you have a need, you need to act in your best interest and forget about whether other people will agree. How else were they going to get Jesus' attention? Bear in mind that the nature of their disease was of such that they were banished from regular society. Anyway, Jesus saw their condition, knew their need, and he responded by sending them to the priests. I wonder if they went to the priests in Galilee and priests in Samaria. Just a thought. You might be wondering about the significance of Jesus sending them to the priests. It was a centuries-old practice that in the case of this disease, that if the patient is healed, then he was required to go to the priests so that he can be certified as healed. That certification from a person of authority in the community meant that the former leper could return to his community and resume functions as a normal member of the society. Jesus was not just honoring this, the tradition. He did something more. They left where he was as lepers to go get certified as healed. Jesus was testing their faith. You only go to the priest if you are healed. These guys, by walking off to go to see the priests, they were exercising faith that they would be healed by the time they get to the priests. The miracle occurred even before they got to the priests. This is where it gets interesting. Do we continue to go to the priests, or do we turn back and report to Jesus? He was the one who told us to go show ourselves to the priests, because that was a social requirement. We have good news to share with the priests who would certify that we no longer have leprosy and so we will continue on our assignment. Go show yourselves to the priests. But brothers, we are healed. There is no doubt about it. When Jesus spoke to us, we were certified lepers and we were cast out of regular society. One minute we were lepers and the next minute we are clean. I am going back to tell Jesus thanks. What was the response of the other nine? There is the problem. Something has been done for you, some deeds of kindness shown, or someone did something that fixed a problem or satisfied a need. In other words, if that person had not done what they did, you would still be in the place of great need and suffering. First, there is a pack of ten with one thing in common, leprosy. Well, one voice decided to turn around and conveys gratitude for the healing. How difficult is that? Instead, nine guys, the pack of nine did not follow him. Nine guys went about their business. This one guy was grateful, so grateful that he had to go back to say thanks to Jesus. No, 
he didn't just say, thanks for healing me of my leprosy, Jesus. No, he was exuberant. He was expressive. He really was saying thanks in a special way. He praised Jesus. He threw himself at Jesus' feet. He could not contain his joy. This guy was really, really thankful. Oh, and by the way, he was a Samaritan. Did you notice that? He was not Jewish like Jesus was. If there was one who should not have returned to say thanks, it should be him. However, he broke away from the pack and he left the nine. The nine were the majority. The nine were the others who, although they were convinced they were healed, did not return to say thanks. The nine did not make expressing gratitude a priority. They chose to do otherwise. Where are the other nine? Jesus asked. Jesus was surprised that the majority chose not to come and say thanks. That is very often the case with the majority, with a pack of nine. It is easy to postpone the moment to express gratitude and do so, when it is convenient or not do it at all. One guy made it a priority and he was the least expected. Jesus declared him clean and he did not have to go to see the priest. The pack of nine, mm, we will never know. Today, if someone, if God has done something for you, stop and give God thanks. Stop and say thanks to that person. Come out of the pack of nine and say thanks. Thanks.